When I was 12, going on 13, uh, I got a haircut. My friends, these two butchers, took me and got a haircut. And it was a flat top. I guess you'd call it a crew cut today. And I went home, and my father took one look at me. They also bought me boys' pants, boys' shirt, boys' kicks. <laughs> and uh, I walked into the house, and my father threw me out immediately. Uh, and I was 13. When I think about Greenwich Village in the 1950s, I think of my parents who spent time in the village with their artist friends. Um, my dad had been thrown out of graduate school for, for communist subversive activities. I'm not sure my father was ever, ever a communist, but Greenwich Village was a place where people who held liberal beliefs congregated. There were a lot of artists, a lot of gay people. Um, it was, for a long time, for a long time, Greenwich Village attracted um, um, beatniks, people on the cutting edge, and during the 1960s, this part of Greenwich Village, where I'm sitting now, became increasingly popular among young gay people. Um, there were bars. This park in particular was, was a, a place where young people gathered, often young street kids, as I've called them. Kids who had no real home to go to, kids who lived on the street. Well, Greenwich Village was a special place in New York. It was a place where everybody knew you could be accepted, uh, you could compliment people, you could be different. It was a place of freedom, fun, interesting people. And of course, a lot of gays came down here and had always a spot here somewhere, Washington Park or Christmas Street. By the time I got here in 66, it was Christmas Street. And it was just a mecca for gay people. There were so many of us that you didn't have to worry about getting beat, like there's safety in numbers. And the vice squad couldn't operate because we knew what they looked like. And the community, you know, we, from one end of the block to the other end of the block, we'll tell you who was vice. So it was a very, very safe place to be. And Stonewall was in the heart of this, and thus it was so important to us. This was a place where street kids and their friends gathered in the evening and late into the evening and hung out in this park. So at the time that the Stonewall, the Stonewall Inn was raided, there would have been kids already on the street and other young people, other young gay people, walking up and down Christopher Street checking each other out. In some ways, it was like the old fashioned, um, uh, as you see in movies on Main Street, where kids drive up and back in cars. And here it was people walking up and down the street, looking for, uh, looking to meet other people for sex principally, um, but also to hang out with their friends. You know, they, we were sexual deviants. You know, society thought we were sexual de deviants. Uh, we were freaks, we were outcasts, you know. Uh, Matter of fact, I, I was arrested many times for not having the three articles of clothing on. They happened to do a sex check, which is where they would line everyone up and they would check um, your ID and make sure that the sex on your ID matched the way that you were clothed, the way that if you were wearing makeup. I mean, if you didn't have three articles of the same gender that was on your ID, you were arrested. So unfortunately, this unfairly targeted a lot of the trans community. Um, so people of people who were trans were getting arrested. Yeah, society wasn't too good back back then with us, and not too good today either. You know, uh, there were some queer elders and adults that would come through Washington Square Park uh, and give us money, take us home, feed us, let us take showers sometimes from the goodness of their hearts and sometimes it was just for sex you know that and you know and that was all right too there's no judgment on that that was our survival you know but uh the police were brutal you know uh it was it was hard you know but this was the village was our home you know it was like as long as we stayed together we were all right i think people are often shocked to learn that the gay bars were either owned or controlled by the mafia in the 1960s and that was because it was illegal to serve homosexuals alcohol there was no law that said explicitly you couldn't serve homosexuals alcohol but there was a law put in place after prohibition that said you couldn't serve people who were disorderly the word disorderly was used to impose a ban on, on serving alcohol to homosexuals so if you're a bar owner you're not going to serve alcohol to homosexuals a legitimate bar owner so that left a wide open space for organized crime. And so they came to own and control the gay bars in New York City.